Welcome back to MMA Oddsbreaker. I'm Frank Trigg. That's Cully Butterfield. Get ready to fight Ronnie Marks. Coming up here on World Series of Fighting 12, August 9th here in the Hard Rock Hotel Casino. Let's see. You competed back in 2013 of April of 2013. Is that the last time you had a fight? Uh, yeah, it's it's been a little while. Took a little time away from it. Why so much time off? Um, You know, I actually had a fight in December, but, uh, you know, I just, my weight kind of got away from me, and I did, it was a heck of a cut, and I actually fainted before it lands, and I pulled out, and then I just, you know, took a little time away from it. Half the reason, I used to live in Milwaukee, and I ended up moving home to help my dad out. We have a family business, masonry business, and I, I wanted to help my dad out, and, you know, kind of made the decision to come up home for a little, little bit, and, you know, help, help with him, and, and, you know, I kind of, I don't regret it, but, I, you know, it did kind of tamper my MMA career made training a little more, more difficult because I was training at Duke Rufus and, and um, after this summer, that's my plans. I'm moving back to Milwaukee to commit this full time again. Oh, good. Okay. So now obviously now I understand why they call you the Mason for your nickname. It makes sense. It's, it's your yeah. Yeah. Business. Well, it, it, it's kind of funny because uh, when I was in high school, I didn't really lift. I, I didn't lift much, but yet I was very strong as far as a wrestler because uh, when I turned 12 years old, I was a full-time employee of Butterfield Masonry. And even when I was younger, I, I went to work and stuff. But as soon as I turned 12, it was, you're not going down the river with your friends this summer. You're, you're working. You're, you're hauling block. You're finishing cement. You're, you're doing that. So I, I've, I've been a working man pretty much my entire life. Well, the good news is if uh, when you retire from fighting that you have a, a secondary career you can fall back on, Unfortunately, most <laughs> fighters have nothing to fall back on. You know, they're kind of stuck. Yeah, like, when exactly. they're done fighting, they're done. This is it. You have, at least you have a profession you go jump right into, take yeah. over the family company again. So that you've got so you have a B plan. Yep, yep, and I'm very fortunate like that too. Yeah. So what's going to happen to the business then when you go back down to Milwaukee? Um, you know, my my dad will always thrive. Uh, right now it's like I'm second in command and my dad's on top. You know, he's. He's a little older, so I, I don't. He's not really planning. He's one of those guys that I'll work till I die mentality. Yeah. Not really planning to retire, nothing like that. And uh, uh, it's funny because I would actually take. Uh, I, I was taking tasks away from him that he. I mean, like, <laughs> screen board. You know, I'm the screen man now, and I was that little battle taking it from him. He didn't want to give it up, but and I was like, you know, Dad, you're getting old. It's my turn to start doing that stuff. Um, you know, he'll thrive. I know, I know he'll get more employees and I'm sure that, you know, I'll come up and help him when I, when I do work, but he also understands that, you know, I, I have opportunities and this is something I got to do. You know, you're only young once you, you only have a uh, so shine and, you know, I'm trying to shine. Uh, let's talk about your opponent, Ronnie Marks. How do you see this fight breaking down and how do you see him as an, as an opponent? Um, you know, I, I really don't know much about him. I, I've heard that he, he's got a decent ground game and he's more of a grinder is what I've been told. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't really had time to, you know, this, this all happened so fast. I mean, literally I got the call Tuesday and, you know, I said, yeah, I'll take, you know, I had an hour to decide and it took me 20 minutes. And, uh, and, uh, what I've heard about him is he's a grinder, you know, kind of similar to my style, but I, I, I do feel like I, I have pretty good striking, but for some reason when I get in the cage, it's like, Oh, I'm going to try to take you down and grind it out and try to beat you up. Um, in my mind, I feel like I might have an advantage as far as a stand-up. So I almost want to go in, in like a Chael Sonnen striker and, you know, try to, you know, just use more boxing and try to land more strikes and maybe get on top and try to grab. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good, pretty good idea. And he has, he has a bit of a grinder. You look at his record. He's 14-3. and three, He has five KOs, four submissions, and four and five decisions. So he's a guy that, 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 it always, he's kind of all over the map, but he is going to grind your eyes and try and hold you down and try and TKO, TKO you once he has you on the ground. And that's kind of the game. And, and it's, it has worked for him very well, except against uh, Yul Romero in the UFC. He got knocked out by punches. And then against uh, Tego Santos, he got uh, uh, TKO'd. He got uh, kicked to the body. Um, he took a liver kick and then got, and then got put down. Uh, but he, uh, he's, a, he's a very, very tough fighter. But like I said, like you said, he's a grinder. It's going to be interesting to see how you guys match up feet-wise on your feet. Striking wise, I'm not sure how it's going to play out yet. That's one of those things. The anomaly within the within the fight is how that's going to play out. If this goes to the ground and he ends up taking you down, say you slip on a banana peel and you end up on your back, are you going to try and play the game from your back, or are you going to immediately get back up to your feet again? Um, 
I'm a wrestler. I don't like being on my back. I'm going to get up and I'm going to get back to my feet and I'm going to try to take him down. Uh, or, uh, you know, I'm not a, one of my things is always, uh, I've had my back taken and I love going, you know, I'm a wrestler. I'll go for a switch. I'll go for this. I'll scramble. You know, it might be a scramble battle. Who knows? Um, you know, I, I don't like being on my back. I'm not going to go for, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I, I don't have a couple submissions and that's cause those guys give it to me. I don't go for submissions. That's just not my game. Um, if you, if you put your arm out, I'll go for it, but I'm going to try to get back on top. I'm going to try to get out. I'm going to escape. I'm not going to stay down there. So I, I won't play the back game. I'm going to try to get out and do whatever I can. Well, Collie, thanks for coming on here with MMA Oddsbreaker. I appreciate it. Good luck against Ronnie Woodla and uh, excuse me, Hani. It's, he's Brazilian, so it's, it's Portuguese. <laughs> I apologize yeah, he, about that. Uh, but yeah, good luck but, and, and uh, have fun. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the interview. It's an honor. When, it, when you first texted me, like I said, this is really Frank Trigg, and I was like, yeah. oh, damn, I watched you on TV, so this is an honor. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I get that. Uh, with the younger fighters, I get that quite a bit. And a lot of the older fighters are like, "What do you, Dick, what do you want this time? Like, why are you bothering me now? It's like, <laughs> you know, it depends. It's a mixed bag for me. So, yeah. But thanks. I appreciate that. Good luck, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take her easy, man.